New season means new seasonal recipes, and now it's easier than ever. With fresh ingredients delivered to your door, HelloFresh brings the farmer's market to you. Get 16 free meals plus three gifts with code AWFUL16 at HelloFresh.com slash AWFUL16. I also want to point out that at this point, the star of the movie is mouth noises in between words. (laughs) Oh my god. It's like all the lip smacks and tongue clicks that I've ever edited out of Eli and Andrew's track somehow came back to haunt me. (laughs) Right? This movie has an ASMR level of mouth noises. It's fucking crazy. We donated them like locks of love to this film soundtrack. I had a Carabello yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because I knew it would get me a visit to Canada one of these days. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us today, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. I don't believe you. And also <laughs> joining us tonight, sitting three time zones to my west northwest, is the co host of the Opening Arguments podcast and the Clean Up on Aisle 45 podcast, Andrew Torres. Andrew, welcome back, sir. Hi, Noah. Thanks for having me. I am 100% positive that my legal skills will be helpful in breaking down all the law that is definitely going to happen in this legal movie <laughs> about a lawyer. It's This movie so often just goes like, no, Andrew, it's just around the corner. It is. Yeah. No, it's, it's just, coming. We're almost, are they going to have a hearing or a trial yeah. or something? We would never tokenize you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so tell us, Andrew, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Mountaintop. It's the story of nothing. Not yep. a goddamn thing. <laughs> there's a lawyer. There's a crazy person. But nothing anyone does matters. And no. nothing happens. So, uh, yeah, it's the story of 2022. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well... If you're looking for something to ontologically support Grandpa's QAnon beliefs, but Elon Musk isn't buying Twitter fast enough for you, <laughs> you will love this movie. They, they were sour tweets. They were just, their tweets were almost... All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Ooh, ooh uh, best worst being a visual medium, right? Yeah. <laughs> The the Venn diagram of this movie and its multiple dream sequences and flashbacks and the audio book of the script is a circle. Yep, yes. It sure is. Yes. I, I thought that several times. It's like, I don't really have to watch the movie. I could just, the whole screen could just be dedicated to my notes. That would be so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was going to go with best worst pretending that pastor is an actual job. Oh, oh boy, yeah. isn't it though? <laughs> The the same as being a lawyer, as yeah, this right. movie will tell us. <laughs> yeah, so the, the plot of this movie is that there's this lawyer turned pastor who has to lawyer one last time after he thought he'd gotten out. And like throughout the movie, they have to kind of acknowledge that you know, that doesn't really hurt his ability to be a pastor. There's nothing that one does in that job, really. So. They show him doing something of import for like eight seconds at the first scene of the movie, and then he stops and he's bad at it. Right, and they're just like, I, I, we can't think of another thing. There's sermons? Uh, see, and I'm going to go with best worst glorifying of mental illness oh, and that's yeah. a that's a stiff competition here yes. on god uh-huh. awful movies let me say it so as better men with more flowing locks than me have pointed out christian cinema is a little bit of like a canary in a coal mine as to what the christian right is doing with their next steps and based on the movies of the last couple of months grandpa you don't have alzheimer's you're talking to god is a major part of the yeah. 2024 oh. platform <laughs> Sure is. They might as well have butterscotch pudding run as the candidate for 2024. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm not sure what indignant sighs are actually made of, but Andrew needs a minute to consume some of those in advance of the record. So we're going to pause for a quick break. But when we come back, we'll dive into all the plotting tedium that is Mountaintop. No, no, I understand that, Senator, but you have to understand my client thinks that's a compliment. 
no, no, you do not have to check the box as to whether you like him. Yes or no. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks again for your time, Senator. Hey, Andrew. Uh, gentlemen, come in. Present. Uh, d- oh, it's the player pieces from a Monopoly board. Thanks. Yeah, it is. Uh, it was a complete set, but I got hungry on the way over. It's true. He did. I, I, I see. Uh, how can I help you? We want to sue our teeth. You, you, you'd like to sue your teeth? Yeah, you know, all the brushing and flossing. The rinsing. The brushing again. Uh, guys, if you want to take care of your oral health, why don't you just try Quip? What's Quip? Look, good health starts with good habits, and Quip makes it easy by delivering all the oral care essentials that you need to care for your mouth. The Quip electric toothbrush is loved by over 7 million mouths and has timed sonic vibrations with 30-second pulses to guide a dentist-recommended two-minute clean, plus a lightweight, sleek design for both adults and kids with no wires or bulky charger to weigh you down. Wow, that does sound good. It is. Plus, they've got floss, toothpaste, mouthwash, and even refillable gum that helps keep your teeth clean and your breath fresh. And they'll deliver it every three months from $5. Shipping is free, so you can save money and skip the hustle and bustle of in-store shopping. All right, Andrew, we're sold. Where do we sign up? If you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash awful. That's spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. Quip, the good habits company. Now, shall I add your teeth to my wall of things you can't sue? If you must. Put it next to Jason Momoa for not giving me smooches. And i done. Hey, podcast listener. As you may already know, this month is Matreon. That's the time of the year when we beg you extra super hard for your money. Look, we know you've been meaning to give us money, and now is the perfect time to do it because new and upgrading patrons help us hit all kinds of goals at our patron-only pajama party in July. Like a vegan snack tasting. Or having Heath guest DM an episode of D&D Minus. And, of course, Marsha's secret accent extravaganza. (laughs) But this week, before you go to Matreon.com to give us your money, won't you consider our own poor little Andrew Torres? That's right. Your Patreon dollars keep Andrew in the Tums and Peps that he so sorely needs whenever Eli suggests a major felony on the show. It's true. You'll be helping send his son to college so that, like the recipient of a Kung Fu lineage, he too will be able to keep me out of jail one day. Uh, Eli, I don't, I don't think my son wants to be a lawyer. You never know. And of course, you'll pay it for the much-needed therapy to help Andrew get over Heath and Eli destroying the chairs in his office. So head on over to Matreon.com, that's M-A-Y-T-R-E-O-N.com, and add a new pledge or upgrade your pledge today. Oh, by the way, Andrew, about those chairs? Already? Yep, already. <sighs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on a lawyer mountain biking and lawyering at the same time, I guess. He's multi- He's talking into a little voice recorder, making lawyer notes as he mountain bikes. You do this, right, Andrew? Maybe no. you surf? <laughs> <laughs> Clients 100% love it when you do their work while doing other stuff you have to concentrate on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I don't, I've never done any lawyering, but I've done a little bit of mountain biking. And let me tell you, you don't do voice recording at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> also, Stacey, remember, remember to go. <laughs> you do if you hate your assistant. So. That's okay, true. yeah, that's no, that's fair. fair. So, yeah, so he's, he's, he's lawyer biking his way up this mountain, finally gets to the summit, completely barren of sweat, which is weird, right? You would have thought he would sweat at some point while mountain biking. But then he gets to the top of this mountain. I write in my notes, I get the impression that summary judgment is the only lawyer phrase they know. <laughs> yep. Right? Mm-hmm. We hear it three times in his little dictation. I did. We get. I, I mean, I, I thought next was buy 200 subpoenas. Hoist those depositions. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to batten down the cross-examination. I mean, it is just 
<laughs> law words out of context. I, and, and, and by the way, we're supposed to believe he has three summary judgment motions that he hasn't started. Right. So unless he's a nothing lawyer, like <laughs> I, I, that's a year's worth of work. Right. Like, I mean, that's like if the movie were about an architect and he got up to the top of the mountain, it was like memo to self build building by end of week. <laughs> It's just, uh. but just then he gets to the top of the mountain and he notices that I don't know that mountains are pretty, so he shouldn't be a lawyer anymore, right? He we watch him have this epiphany. He and the way that they visualize this is that he throws his voice recorder into the woods. <laughs> I'm like, leave only footprints, asshole! Come on. <laughs> <laughs> starts to play brutal, brutal, brutal. oh shit now no, oh now i gotta go find <laughs> irritate a squirrel <laughs> there's there's attorney client privilege right there's work product on that tape but yeah anyway, right yeah. <laughs> all right just some park ranger comes back to the office guess who's a rapist <laughs> <laughs> find the coolest stuff all right so then we get the movie's title mountaintop and and that uh, is accompanied by some pretty shots of of mountaintops in case the title didn't take the first time around (sighs) yeah we also get a christian song here over the credits uh the first lyrics of which are oh be kind to the beggar that's inside of you (laughs) i just wrote i mean someone should have given this songwriter a heads up about that (laughs) (laughs) well to be fair the the singer is very obviously improvising this song at gunpoint Uh, so (laughs) yeah apropos of that it ends with the lyric I'm broken to pieces, which I, I guess uh, supersedes his prior hit. I'm broken intact, but uh, <laughs> all right. So then we jump to to six years later, and we see Sam. This is one of our main main characters. He's an older gentleman that I have down as if the word Dagnabbit came to life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I Hey, can I just say, I know we like shit on actors a lot for being in this movies. I am so proud of this actor for finally being in a movie where he doesn't just warn kids about that their cabin. Like, let's give him <laughs> credit where it's due. All right, guys, this is Barry Corbin, right? He, he was the cranky old holdout in Better Call Saul, right? Who didn't want to sell his house. And he was the... I'd piss on a spark plug if I thought it would help General from War Games, if you remember. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Let the boy in. Uh, oh, so, wow. So he knows how to act. He just does not give a shit. <laughs> I just <laughs> did this instead. Okay. To be fair, he was working with this script, right? Yeah. <laughs> there are toys with pull strings that get better scripts to work with than this guy did. <laughs> oh, I wish there was a snake in my boots. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so he's watching a building... Uh, burn and then he wakes up that was a dream and he starts writing about his dream in his little dream journal right because he can't tell his wife because they're old and don't fuck anymore exactly yeah he's got to tell somebody so then we get him and his wife waking up in the morning this is sam and muriel they're a loving couple that loves jesus as well are they are they a loving couple i have i have my questions based on this scene because he reaches for a biscuit and she spends like six minutes being like you're too fucking fat for a biscuit (laughs) i wrote in my notes hey you know what you can do instead of being in this marriage fucking kill yourself (laughs) (laughs) but yeah so he's checking his mail making his coffee um they, they say grace over their biscuits but they call god papa yeah if you got a pet term for the voices in your head just why don't you just go ahead and check yourself in i I wrote this is how you end up with a firefighter prophet people you gotta be careful (laughs) so all right so yeah but he apparently owns a lawn care business and he so we cut to him outside loading up his his tools into his truck heading out to get the first lawn of the day when suddenly the cops show up and, and of course, at first, it's all friendly. He's like, oh, I ought to get you some more biscuits, but my wife won't give me any more biscuits because I'm too fat, apparently. And they're like, can you shut up about the biscuits, man? We're trying to arrest you. <laughs> yeah, but there is a deeper implication here that occasionally the cops show up to what we will learn is this lawn care manager, and he gives them biscuits, and then they leave. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I have that relationship with several neighborhood cats, but. (laughs) (laughs) Right. But so he's been accused of embezzlement. So they're arresting him for that. 
And and then we cut to his wife going to visit the mountain bike ex-lawyer from the opening scene, mm-hmm. right? Now he has decided to give up the lawyering life for the li- to live the life of a small town pastor instead. That yes. lateral move, but yeah, yeah. No, he's, <laughs> he is he is staring at these pink pieces of paper when the scene establishes. And again, remember, eight seconds ago he was a lawyer. So I'm going. What do they think lawyers do? But <laughs> apparently those are pastor pink paper things. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Pastors use pink paper things. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Like, that, lawyers you know. use legal pads. We all know they use right. yellow paper. Damn yeah, it. They, obviously. Right. <laughs> They're the only yeah. profession with a color coded paper, I think. <laughs> yeah. Her husband sent her because he wants him to be her, his lawyer. And I was like, well, that's. That doesn't make any sense because he wouldn't have kept up his lawyer shit. But apparently, yes, he did. He kept up his lawyer shit for six years. You you have to pay for that shit. You have to take <laughs> continuing legal education. You have to renew. Like, it's no, that's the least in this <laughs> prophetic on the fifth movie. Year, right. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, ah, God, this this is eating up a lot of weekends for a thing I threw into a mountain gorge. <laughs> Yeah, but he's like, no, technically, I guess I'm still approved to practice law in this state. So, I mean, I guess I could, but I'm not going to. <laughs> and I, I just want to point out the opening line that uh, Muriel uses to try and persuade him here is, I know we don't belong to your church, but, and that's kind of like, hey, I'm not a patron of the show, but I got <laughs> yeah. some great ideas about what you could do. Yeah. Or yeah, right, right. Or more like, I'm not a listener, but yeah. <laughs> so she says, but we want you to be the lawyer. And she's like, what? Wouldn't you rather have like, um, like a lawyer? A lawyer, you, yeah. You know, just one of those that, <laughs> that actually does yeah. this job. And she says, no, no, no. My husband had a prophetic dream that you were going to represent him in court. Now I don't know lawyer ethics, but I feel like at this point you're like obligated to contact a hospital or something right th- this is this is when you stare at the freckle on your wrist go wow look at the time sorry <laughs> uh, escort them out of your office barricade the door change your phone number and move to another jurisdiction well yeah, yeah and she tries to preempt that she's like now i know this sounds crazy but if you think about it prophetic dreams do happen in the bible and i'm like if it happened in the Bible as your standard of sanity, you need to go ahead and just lock yourself up, too. <laughs> she also drags a bag full of Abramite babies in with the room. Now, I smashed these before I got here. Well, well, but it's great because it's a gotcha for him, right? Because he's become a pastor. So she's like, hey, your shitty book says that this is real. And he's like, oh, it my, does my got- shitty book does say it's real. Yep. Fuck. Yeah, and 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 then she even pulls out his shitty book. She's like, "Do you have a a Bible?" And I really wanted him to be like, "I don't." I if you can believe that, but he does. Sorry, I just wing this pastor and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so but so he she opens the Bible and reads some uh, the the whole like what you do to the least amongst uh, uh, of my children or whatever uh you do to me she reads that passage yeah the least followed bible passage right the fucking fire safety codes at the bottom of your vacuum cleaner instruction manual of the bible (laughs) (laughs) so then okay so the movie has to be like but he's so busy pastoring so it has to think of what a pastor would do so they show him doing marital counseling that he is obviously wildly unqualified for yep this marriage counseling starts with why don't you tell him what you did to the flower pots last summer? And I would just like to say I'm very proud. All three of our cast members asked in our notes, did he fuck those flower pots? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but then he goes like, well, I did some batting practice on him. I'm like, oh, so he like violently destroyed shit with a baseball bat. I guess you should probably call the police, huh? Mm-mm. No. No. <laughs> As will shock no one, he seems to take the abuser's side in this. Yeah. We Boy, we do he? we do meet the best character in the movie though. Uh, I have to call her divorce lady because she does not get a name and will not appear again in the film. Uh, but her line is, "I knew talking to a man would be a mistake," and I'm like, "Yeah, you go, girl." <laughs> Generally speaking, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. So we we learn that she's spoken to a divorce attorney and she's evil, and the pastor's like, mm, "Yep, you are pretty evil," and then she storms off, right? 
And then the husband who has established himself as a violent abuser is like, well, don't worry. I've hidden all my money in the basement so that she can't give it. Don't tell anybody or I'll murder you. My character and hers will never enter the movie again. Goodbye. Uh, I, we are passing lightly over here that this is horrible, right? Like he looks at the, at the, at the lawyer turned pastor and says, you know, you're going to, you're going to keep that thing I just confessed to you, that crime I just confessed to you confidential, right? And because the protagonist of this movie is a goddamn criminal, he says, oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's that's all. You can tell me about all kinds of ongoing crimes you're committing. And no, you cannot. <laughs> uh, being a pastor does not mean you can help a guy hide marital assets just because nope. you think his wife is kind of bitchy. Like, <laughs> no, that's not the way this works. Oh. Well, and the movie never acknowledges that that makes him a bad guy, right? Not not yes. even that it makes the husband a bad guy. Nope. No, that I think you are. I think the movie's take on this is supposed to be, oh, you know, both sides in a divorce. Am I right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Marital right. problems when you've been physically abusive and threatening with a baseball bat, so you hide your money so that she and maybe your children don't get the support they so desperately need in a patriarchal society. All right, let's move on to the plot of the movie, shall we? We've had some yep. fun today. <sighs> and we also get the line of, you know, lawyers and preachers are really no different at, fuck you! Yeah, Fuck right, you. Right. Yes, we are. Sorry. Yeah. As I've had to learn the hard way, you're allowed to tell your secrets to both lawyers and preachers, except only preachers are the ones who can be like, uh, magic, magic. It's fine. It doesn't matter. I mean, I say that to you, Eli. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, so we wrap up his pastoring. And then he pulls up at home after a long day of being useless and accomplishing nothing. <laughs> and we, we meet his wife, who is painting when he comes in, technically. Yeah. <laughs> It very much feels like they were like, hey, this is actually like my cousin's painting, so don't mess it up when you're pretending to paint on it. And they, <laughs> so she's just like, poke, poke, there's already green here. Is it okay if I just poke where there's already green? <laughs> and and they have a bad marriage. But yes. do we ever learn why? Like, I'm not saying I paid strict attention to this film, so I'm, <laughs> I'm very willing to be. Uh, but I, I felt like they were just sort of like we established like they don't like each other and we never fucking learned why for the rest of the movie. Well, so it, they sort of do later. Yeah. So she when he decided to give up his good paying job as a lawyer and, and become a useless pastor who just yammers about Jesus all the time. She was not on board with that. Apparently, he did that without discussing it with his life partner, or at least without taking her input, and so she's, like, still pissy about that. Is that the conflict? Because I watched this movie twice, and there's the scene later with the, you know, I almost got a divorce, but I never, ever got that out of it. So, wow. Thanks. That was that was my assumption, um, but uh, I, I, guess, I guess I could be just, like trying to make a better script in my head <laughs> yeah, involuntarily <I> <laughs> because yeah. the other plot point about them which makes all of the trouble in their marriage very confusing is that they're trying to have a baby yeah well that right that fixes all the problems in your marriage <laughs> did you know that eli oh it's yeah true. no if you have a bad marriage that's that's um a, you know devoid of love and on the brink of divorce that's the best time to have a kid <laughs> it fixes so, everything and I love the stupid fucking way that this misogynistic movie establishes that it's not a good marriage as he comes home and he's like, hey, so what are we doing for dinner? And she's like, ah, I made myself a sandwich if you want to make a, a sandwich. It's like, yeah, man. I mean, you were you were just in town. You could have brought home KFC or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he does that classic like, ugh, ugh, I guess I'll just eat this wood then. Like, he starts chewing at the carpet. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Well, but we do see that there's no bread left except the heel pieces because his life is awful and he's, no one loves him. Test audience is just like, hit her! Hit her! She <laughs> left you the heels! <laughs> so then the next day he pulls up at the city jail uh, to to go see Sam, the guy whose wife wants him to, to be his lawyer, right? But on the way, we meet this character, Bryce the Reporter. <laughs> God. <laughs> And I love how this movie even acknowledges they're like, he's like, wow, you're like a man out of time. 
Yep. Right? Local reporters aren't a thing and haven't been for quite a while. And he's like, you know what? In this town, in this town, they are a thing. They Weird, are a huh? thing. <laughs> and I'm amazing at my job. I'm a nin- <laughs> you will learn I am a ninja spy with access to all kinds of information for the fucking <laughs> yeah. Bay Donk Balloon or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> Yeah, he's not just amazing at his job. He's amazing at the CIA's job. In right. Movie. Yes, yeah. exactly. Deep throat retired to this small <laughs> town. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. So, okay. So he goes in to see Sam. Now, the cop who this is the cop that arrested Sam earlier and, and was clearly buddies and comes and gets biscuits for him on the regular uh, from him on the regular. Uh, he's not buying this whole Sam's a crook business. He, he makes that very clear to Mike, the lawyer. Right. I, 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 can we mention that uh, Mike's opening gambit here is, look, I'm here as a minister, not as a lawyer. And for some reason, the cop doesn't say, yeah, man, no one here gives a shit. Like, just <laughs> just come in and visit that. Like, either one, you're both on the list. <laughs> we don't we don't like have a special box. We check yeah, right. for minister <laughs> or lawyer. Yeah. So he goes in to see Sam. And Sam is like, yeah, Papa told me you was coming by Papa. He means fucking God, of course. Oh, and this movie has to do this thing where every time Sam has a very fucking obvious religious expression that the movie thinks is clever, they have to use the protagonist as a way to be like, your father is still alive? Why yeah. would you fu-? And he's got to be like, no, I call God Papa. And he's like, that's creepier than the name we already have for God, which is saying something. <laughs> <laughs> so, and yeah, this is also where, like, Sam explains to Mike that, yeah, he may be in jail, but Mike's brain is in jail religiously, if you think about it. Which And this, of course, makes no fucking sense because this is supposed to be the character that, like, gave up the life of a high-powered attorney to be a humble pastor, right? <laughs> Why is his brain in religious jail? I know you heard the voice of God and gave up your life, secular life to live religiously, but you're not quite there yet. You're at 90% crazy. <laughs> <laughs> So, and this is also where he explains the crime that he's accused of. Apparently, he was, like, acting as the guest pastor at a church, and $100,000 of that church's money wound up in his checking account somehow. (laughs) So, spoiler for later on in the movie, $100,000 that we will find out was immediately transferred back into the church's accounts, right? So, literally, the stakes are... Oops, I made a wiring error the movie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Right, and he didn't. That's and he the- didn't. He was, he was framed of a wiring oops, error I was in the framed video. of a typo, yes. Uh, oops, I was framed of a typo, that, that fantastic yeah. running series. <laughs> so... Yeah, but, but it, you know, and Mike tries to tell him, look, man, I'm not a lawyer, and even when I was, I wasn't a criminal lawyer like this you there we're not just interchangeable he's like god told me otherwise in a dream and he's like oh well in that in that case i guess i'll still- tell you what talk to my close personal friend god and see what he has to say about it and he's like great can i get you a different lawyer yeah, yeah. <laughs> right but sam explains he wouldn't want no shitty atheist lawyer mm-hmm. that that's mutual two votes <laughs> <laughs> Also, he leaves him with a little bit of prophecy. He says, tell your wife that baby Isaac is on the way. Uh, okay. Yeah. I I realize this is your career and not mine, but like, I felt like I knew what Christianity was. Like, is it, is, is it the religion that says we all become precogs? Like, I, I didn't think so, <laughs> but like, this movie seems to think it is. I, was that baffled. lady quoted the parts in the Bible where that happens, Andrew, earlier. Uh, they yeah. established it's in the book. That's the nice thing about Christianity is every every superpower does have a wing of Christianity where it's their thing. <laughs> True. Yeah, All that's right. fair. So, yeah, so Mike heads home and his wife is painting again, but this time she's painting her I'm pregnant painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the line here is... Do you know what the filled in circle means? And like I it, and he does not stare dumbly at her the way I stare dumbly at the screen <laughs> going, is this entire movie a non sequitur at my expense? I feel like this is an elaborate prank that Eli would do. Yeah. <laughs> 
hired the guys for war games. And I could, could have. Sure. Why the fuck yep. not? Yeah. Next time, get Ali Sheedy, okay? Um, <laughs> I, it, the filled in circle means I'm pregnant. Why? Because go fuck yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And if he doesn't believe her, she's got a plastic stick that she's peed on to fling around the room quite a bit. <laughs> Movies always forget that those things get pissed on. I don't. Yeah. Okay. I, I like that he says, how do you know? I was like, how do you think she knows, man? She threw fucking chicken bones. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, she can feel the three-day-old fetus inside of her, damn it. So, yeah, so, so the next day we get Mike out mountain biking some more, uh, and then he then he goes to see Sam in the jail, right, to confront him with this how did you see inside my wife's womb question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to stake out the position right now. I, for one, as a lawyer, would not want a client who could see the future, okay? Like, <laughs> That's you do. I'll stick with the non precognitive clients from here. Yep. On that makes sense. Uh, and this is where Sam tells him his dreams, and his dreams are like bad teenage metaphor poetry. But yes, I was really hoping his dream was just going to be an incredibly detailed description of them fucking. <laughs> like, so y'all started out in missionary. I get it. <laughs> but. but for the first time, and by no means the last, when when the movie wants us to experience Sam's dreams, it, it forgetting that it's a visual medium, decides <laughs> that the best way of doing so is by having an old person narrate his dreams at us. So, uh, yeah, there's nothing I love more than that. Right. And keep in mind that these are not like visually fantastic dreams. Yeah, right? no, He's no. like, my truck broke down and a lawyer helped me fix it and then somebody came out of the church with a, a a big box or you know whatever it's always stuff like that yeah they blew all their money on that cgi fire from the yeah. first three <laughs> sequence Ooh. honestly they must have seen the cgi fire and been like guys do we really want to try and do dreams and they were like no no we'll just have oh yeah yeah <laughs> just have the guy from night court describe them so yeah, but you know so mike hears all about the dream he's still unconvinced and sam's like well it is still act one I guess. <laughs> Only so much I can do. Uh, so he goes back to his pastor's office, and his wife is there with Muriel, with Sam's wife. The two of them are there conspiring against him, apparently. Yeah. He, they have this moment where he's like, how's your appointment? She's like, the baby is good. And he's like, oh, I, I didn't realize we were telling people in front of total strangers this <laughs> early in the pregnancy. And she's like, oh, no, her husband's a prophet. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, he <laughs> magically knew anyway, so... <laughs> Yeah, we get the, I'm one day pregnant. Statistically, that means nothing could possibly go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I also love how nonchalant the wife is about, oh, yeah, but, you know, he dream prophecy. He knew, so it didn't really matter. But Muriel's like, so have you decided to take my husband's case? And he's like, no. And she's like, well, it is still act one, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but again, Mike's excuse here continues to be, I'm a pastor now. Instead of, Psst, hey, Mike, how about I'm not a criminal lawyer? That's a real good answer to, <laughs> would you defend a... me in this criminal case? There's no <laughs> question that at some point in the script writing, someone was like, well, is he a criminal lawyer? And they were like, no, no, he didn't do anything. And they were like, never mind. Let's just keep... <laughs> keep writing. So, yeah, but so Muriel leaves and his wife is all pissed off at him now too so she storms out too like how dare you not become a criminal attorney for this single case six years after your retirement uh so we get this like montage of him thinking hard in a pew and reading his bible mm -hmm. i also want to point out that at this point the star of the movie is mouth noises in between words <laughs> oh my god it's like all the lip smacks and tongue clicks that i've ever edited out of, out of eli and andrew's track somehow came back to haunt me <laughs> right this movie has an asmr level of mouth noises it's yeah. fucking crazy we donated them like locks of love to this film soundtrack <laughs> I had a Carabello yesterday. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so he calls his lawyer friend and he's like, hey, I need to have a meeting with all the church deacons tomorrow. 
right? So we cut to the next morning. The, all the church deacons, by the way, is that friend and one other guy, <laughs> yep. right? So basically he just called him and says, hey, can you call Larry? I don't want to call. I don't want to deal with that asshole. If right? you blow a conch and only three people show up, you should just have a group thread. Come on, people. There you go. <laughs> 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 but but the third guy, old shitty guy, as you have him in your notes, which is fantastic, uh, be instantly becomes the second best character in the movie behind yes. Divorce Lady because his sole line is, wait, you're representing Sam? He's no minister. He's a crackpot. And I'm like, finally, thank God someone gets it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then his other line, and I love this one even more, is to basically say, well, if you've got time to do that on top of your pastor duties, we're obviously overpaying you, right? <laughs> yeah. so we're very clearly paying you for more work than you're than you're doing. Yeah, you're essentially saying I can do this pastoring gig in the you know in my spare time. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> guys, guys, what did we say about acknowledging that this job only is one day a week and is nothing? <laughs> oh, that's right. That's fair. Uh, okay. What about can I can I mention the they pay for my housing and I get to deduct that from my taxes? <laughs> yes or no? Oh sorry. So yeah, so but they have they agreed tentatively to allow him to be a lawyer for this guy. Apparently you need the deacon's permission for that. Yeah, sure, uh, that's in the ABA code of ethics. Yes. <laughs> So then Mike and his lawyer friend, and by the way, I have this guy down as lawyer friend the entire movie. I don't think he ever gets a name. No. Nope. Right? I think Mike always refers him to him as bro or buddy. Yeah. Um, yeah. He might as well be a woman for all this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But so we get a quick scene of Mike and, and lawyer buddy uh, playing cornhole. Yeah, correctly. Two, two two person cornhole, the best of all the cornholes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> they both each throw a sandbag. Well. That is it, I guess. <laughs> it's weird that we have two of these goals the way we play. Why, what, what is this other one even doing here? But this is also like the they make a big deal out of this lawyer friend works for the big lawyer in town, Mr. Forrest, right? Uh, yeah. Who we'll meet later. And he's like, yeah, I'm get, being really overworked. Mr. Forrest is making me do a lot of the work that he could easily do himself. I don't think we ever revisit that, right? No. Ever. <laughs> they just needed something for this guy to be bitching about, about like how tough the lawyer life is. Yeah, it never gets revisited. It never matters. Because nope. I was like, oh, that's the law firm that's eventually going to represent the bad guys. Nope. Nope. No, it won't. Nope. <laughs> And, and, and he's treating, lawyer friend is treating this like it's a strange, like eerie departure from behavior. And I'm writing down like, oh yeah, super weird when the senior partner dumps a lot of work on your desk that he could probably also, God, I hope Morgan doesn't listen to God awful movies. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're telling me that some firms don't treat their lower level employees with <laughs> ultimate respect? <laughs> so get out of here. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This movie is not going to actually settle on a singular plot until about 14 minutes before it's over. So I'm not going to bother imposing act breaks on it, but I will impose a break for us. So we're going to be back in a minute with all the meandering bullshit that is Mountaintop. Yeah. Yes. I, I said I would like to order a pallet of the new chairs. Yeah. Yeah. Just the one office. It's a long story. Yes. Yes. I'll hold. Hey, Andrew, you got a second? Uh, sure, I'm just talking. Hi, Andrew. Uh, what's up, guys? We are mad at you. Yep. What? 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 Why? It's it's your podcast. It's destroying our headphones. My podcast, Opening Arguments, is destroying your headphones. Sure is. I'll be, like, listening to it, right? And then all of a sudden you say something, and I'm like, no, no, no! And I start whipping my head around, and bam! Headphone goes flying out, broken. Yeah, it's happened to me like four times already. I, okay, guys, look, I, I can't prevent the content of my show from making you fly into a head-shaking rage. That's only appropriate. But I, I can recommend Raycon wireless earbuds. What are Raycon wireless earbuds? Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable, and they will not budge trust me uh, yeah i guess that's true raycon sent us a pair to try and they were so great my wife stole them mine too personal endorsement 
<laughs> but how's the battery life? Raycons give you eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life. Then, when you need to charge, it's super easy. You can even do it wirelessly. Wow, but with all those features, it must be pretty pricey, right? Actually, Raycons, you get the same quality audio as other premium audio brands, but at half the price. Wow, Andrew, I'm sold. Where do I get a pair? Check out Raycon's wireless earbuds. My guess is that you're going to want to leave them a five-star review, too. So go to buyraycon.com slash gam today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash gam to score 15% off. Now, you'll excuse me, I'm, I'm still on hold for some new chairs. Ooh, ooh, ask them where their warehouse is. No. It's fine, I can Google it. He's going to Google it. Gonna Google I know. It. Hey, excuse me, is this Mr. Torres's office? Yes. What 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 the hell happened to all your chairs? I see that's a long story. Look, I, can, can I help you? Yeah, so I'm a dream prophet and I've been accused of stealing. I was hoping I could use your lawyer magic to make him let me go, you know, like the tiger. Uh, okay, well, first, I'm not a criminal lawyer. Uh, and also, just general advice, I'd, I'd say probably uh, don't volunteer to anyone that you're a dream prophet. I see, I see. Well, what if I told you I had a dream that you would say yes? Well, then I would use this opportunity to prove to myself that my dreams aren't always accurate and hire a different lawyer. Oh, dang, but that's a good point. Okay, I, I guess I'll hire someone else. C can I just say... Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you seem to be handling this awful calmly. I have a surprising lot of experience. Andrew, I got the Monopoly piece back if you want the whole set. Oh, I do not. <laughs> Fine. Gonna, gonna eat it again. That guy's weird. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're gonna rejoin our hero lawyer it away on Eli's laptop. <laughs> hey, you fuck yes. <laughs> He's trying to get Sam out of jail. His wife is very proud of him. Yeah, she comes in. She's like, good job. If I weren't already full of cum, I'd let you fuck me as a reward. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's time for him to actually lawyer a bit. Finally, Andrew's expertise is going to come in handy here. He pulls up the, to the court. He's now he's by the way, they make a big deal of he's wearing a lawyer suit as opposed to a pastor's suit. I guess. Yeah, no more jeans for him because he means it, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be sitting the right way on chairs and everything for me. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> uh, yes. Not a great thing for your religion if you've got a moment in your movie where it's now the guy who does the job of leading our community is taking things seriously. Right. <laughs> So, okay, so he pulls up in the court, he sees lawyer friend there, and they're like, oh, look at this uh, par parade of peripheral characters before us here, huh? It, no, sorry, my brain's already broken here. They, they're they bringing Sam in to the courtroom, um, and we're going to discuss the, 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 the motion and, like, the craziness and all of that, but... All of the other inmates are sitting in the jury box. Why? I don't know. Nobody. <laughs> the movie doesn't. It's just you like here. Like have some box. seats. I. Well, why what? else would it be behind that wood if you didn't need to keep them away from the rest of society? Right. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> I, I. I named the aneurysm at the back of my neck, and just like you know, I felt like this movie was feeding it after midnight, and ugh, God. <laughs> It was awful. So, uh, yeah, apparently the movie uh, in this in this movie's universe, uh, there's no such thing as the Speedy Trial Act. Uh, you get unreasonably high bail set uh, and you just rot in jail post arraignment. No trial until you can convince someone to be your lawyer. And then <laughs> then you get to go in on a cause I want to point out he's accused of. 30 seconds worth of embezzling a hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. and for that the movie was like well we should set bail at uh i don't know a hundred thousand dollars hundred thousand dollars sure <laughs> it's like that's the only number they know yeah. I, it's <laughs> so 
Weird. So yeah. So uh, upon upon watching the movie twice and reading all of your notes, I'm aware that Pastor Lawyer is Mike, but but my notes refer to him as Ben Santorum about half the time because he <laughs> looks like the love child of of Rick Santorum and Ben Affleck. Yep. Um, okay. And uh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> and and we see uh, the the judge comes in and the judge is a lady and the prosecutor is a lady. So you know she's got to drop her notes and be late and stuff and. There's no reason for that. It never comes up. It never matters. It's it, The movie is just going like, women lawyers, am I right? Yep. They just can't have a competent woman at any point in any way in their movie. Yeah. <sighs> no, no, Mike has this look on his face like, well, you know, if we were back in my church, you'd both have to stay silent. So. Yeah, yeah, right. <sighs> Um, I have to point out this too because they're they're um they're looking over him and lawyer friend are looking over all the different inmates and he's like oh there's some repeat offenders here that's Van such and such he'll be very important later in the movie <laughs> pay the fuck attention <laughs> spoiler nope. I did not pay attention both times I watched this movie because both times when Van shows up later I'm like who the fuck is that <laughs> right well I was distracted because also among the inmates is none other than Tory Martin the funniest man in Christian movies fuck yeah fat guy from that movie where they broke into a house yeah exactly finding faith home faith oh, I, who the no. fuck knows but anyway but he's like a legitimately funny guy that does christian movies and he's trying so hard he's in the background all these scenes just being like put me in coach put me in i'll do, <laughs> I'll do some space work with a gavel is he is he redheaded Aaron Ra guy? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. All right. Okay. I don't know yep. who you owe an apology to, but you definitely owe someone <laughs> an apology. I don't think either of them would find that complimentary. That's for sure. <laughs> I don't. I don't think either listen to the show, so right. we're fine. Yeah. But can I say this? They're duel to the death. I'd watch it. <laughs> oh fuck yeah! <laughs> Absolutely. Fuck yeah! And of course, this is where we meet Mister Forrester, the the big swaggy lawyer who is the boss of of lawyer friend, and he is. The warden from Shawshank Redemption. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's where I recognize him from. Yeah. 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 I have him as the warden for the rest. I don't, I don't remember. It's Mr. Forrest or Mr. Forrest or I can't, I can't even remember. But anyway, so all the lawyers are there and they're like, hey, Mike, aren't you a retired not lawyer anymore pastor guy? And, and he's like, yeah, I'm here representing Sam. And so they all have a good laugh at him for representing Sam the crackpot. Yeah. Yeah. And and somehow this movie has contrived to place you all here in this courtroom where I argue my first motion in six years, as opposed to, you know, it being just me and my client in front of the judge the way it might usually be. So, yeah. <laughs> no, we got tickets on Eventbrite for the trial <laughs> today. <laughs> really? <laughs> us and all the feel. other prisoners. I, I And the judge seems to have that, too, because she's like, well, are you going to place your client on the stand? And I and and. I really, really like the movie would have won me back if he would have just looked up and been like, no, like, you why can the take fuck would I do judicial <laughs> notice of the documents? We're Because all I'm going to do is put him on the stand and go, do you have a house? Yes. Do you agree to like abide by that? Yes. OK, fine. Good. We're done. Let's get out of here. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. Right. So he he says, um, you know, your honor, his his bail's been set at one hundred thousand um, dollars. He owns a home and property free and clear that's worth sixty four thousand dollars. So I want you to move it down to sixty four thousand dollars. And and of course, the the judge is like, like, yeah, but I mean, we can't. That can't be the whole fucking scene, can it? I mean, I agree, but like we have to do a thing, right? We are racing through this 94-minute movie. Uh. So, yeah, so Sam takes the stand, and this seems, I feel like, I'm no lawyer, but I feel like you don't surprise put your client on the stand with no preparation whatsoever. Excellent, excellent thought process, yes. Yeah, especially when your client has, like, fifth-level dementia where he doesn't understand what a trial is or why he's being asked questions that he thinks you already know the answer to. He, the first oh, right. question, he's like, what's your name? He's like, you know my name. And it's like, oh, you're very sick. You should be <laughs> in the <laughs> hospital. <laughs> yeah. Could you, he's, he goes like, so could you, a client who claims to have prophetic dreams, has a pet name for God, and hasn't uttered a single sentence since I've met him without sounding like he was going to ask for my help defending this Wendy's against the Craylon Warriors, <laughs> speak freely about yourself in open court. He just brings him up there and he's like, tell us about yourself. Like they were on a date. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Bachelor number two. I enjoy long walks on the beach. Yeah, all right. Uh, 
Yeah, no, no, just just a little tip to, you know, prospective lawyers in the audience. Like, you, you, you can't ask leading questions of your witness on the stand. You can, however, talk to your witness before you put them on and say, hey, I might ask you about these things. Think about how you might want to answer those. There is a no spoilers clause in, yeah. le- in law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but then... The judge is like, oh, I have a few questions for him, too. And then she might as well be like, so, Mr. Miller, what do you bring into the church potluck next month? You know, it's they're just all buddy, buddy. She's like, are you, you, you know, you, you doing OK? And he's like, well, I, I'm in I'm in jail. She's like, yeah, I guess that sucks. Did you get punched in the face there? He's like, yeah, I got punched in the face. <laughs> and she does not ask the next question, which is, hasn't the movie spent 52 minutes establishing that you have precognition? You can see the fucking future? How did you not see that coming? God damn it. I Sorry. didn't sleep super well last night. God didn't have time to tell me. That's, that's on me. And so I watched a scary movie before bed. And you know that thing where you stay up a little too late and then you're like, ah, I only get four hours now. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, that's why I didn't know. <laughs> that that beats my theory of Papa, don't show me the face punch and stuff. But. <laughs> also, I feel like I, I don't know the law, but is the judge allowed to be like, I ask the questions now? <laughs> we are friends. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, the judge can, but like, again, all of this is just to reduce bail from usurious, right? A hundred thousand dollars for the crime of briefly embezzling a hundred thousand dollars to 64% of that, right? Like, it, yeah, it, it would just be like utterly. Re- Do you own the house? Yep. Uh huh. You promise not to leave the jurisdiction. Okay. Right. <laughs> We're done here. Right. But. You do not also have to establish a close personal friendship with the inmate in order to reduce <laughs> or their determine bail. why how he got that shiner. Yeah, <sighs> so so the judge is like, yeah, we'll reduce your bail to, to sixty four thousand um, dollars, but I want to have a private chat with the lawyers at, in my office later on in the movie, and they're like, yeah, okay, man, no problem. But it's it's an in trouble chat for you, lady lawyer, and yeah, in trouble because you were late and dropped things. So, okay, so Mike's leaving the courthouse when Warden Forrest catches up with him. Okay, I have to point this out. What they're doing is, what they're trying to go for here is a walk by, stop, and talk to you shot. (laughs) Yes. The guy starts way too far back. So poor Warden from Shawshank Redemption has to peas and carrots for way too fucking. (laughs) He's like, yeah, no, we'll get those files. Is he, um, is he behind me? He's six feet away. Okay. Well, then take those files and put them into the other file. He has to be here. How is he still not here? (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. Oh, hey, Frank. I wanted to talk to you for a second. Yeah, and he t- so he, he, he Mike finally walks by and he's like, "Hey, man!" He's like, "Oh, hey, you're the warden from Shawshank Redemption, aren't you?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm like a real actor in this for some reason." And 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 then they have this conversation where he's basically like, "Hey, man, I- I'm cool with you, lawyer and Sam, but you're not going to lawyer him all that hard, are you? You're gonna you're still going to go to jail at the end of this, right?" And he's like, "That's a weird fucking question, man." Well, and, <laughs> and the warden actually makes a pretty decent point where he's like, "Hey, man." Aren't you like the moral center of this community? Isn't it not a great idea for you to then switch jobs to claiming someone's innocent of a crime and then switch right back to moral center again? Good good point by villain of the movie number like four we're on right now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now we cut to the 430 lawyer meeting with the judge. Right. Uh. So the judge explains she, she sits the lawyers down. She says, "Okay, so just so you guys both know in advance. Uh, Sam occasionally writes me letters about important dream prophecies he's had that involve cases I'm going to see, and he's always correct. Yeah. <laughs> so I can uh, hear Andrew screaming at his television. Should I, I recruit this, myself? <laughs> this hit me so hard that, like, y- you will see all my notes are in lowercase because I, I, I smashed the uppercase button twice, right? Like, that's how fucking <laughs> pissed off. I wanted it in super caps, and it interpreted that as lowercase. Like, it, it this entire thing is, hey, um, I have a deeply close personal relationship with a criminal defendant. So, quote, uh, if either of you would like to make a motion for me to recuse myself, and I'm thinking, Clarence Thomas, get the fuck off the bench. Like, like, no, can, can you? Oh, God. Oh. 
<laughs> One second, that's my gal pal Ginny. She's texting me something about the election real quick. Gotta, <laughs> so- <laughs> uh, it's a chain mail again. I hate when she sends these. <laughs> But yeah, but but they don't want her to recuse. I mean, I could see why Mike wouldn't, but I don't know why the prosecutor doesn't. Mike, to Mike's credit, Mike's like, oh no, you can still be the judge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're woman real good. Who, <laughs> woman who just openly admitted that you believe my client speaks for God on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, so but Sam gets out of jail. His 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 bond has been posted now. Uh, so Mike gives him a ride home. They get some of that good sweet tea from Muriel. Oh my god, at one point he says, do you think they have sweet tea in heaven? And I wrote in my notes, oh god, please die of dementia already, please. (laughs) Please." Not before uttering the line, well, Miru, you should have seen it. My lawyer was as smooth as your egg custard. But okay, but this is where we're going to establish the motive for the framing, right? Yeah. This is where we learn that Jack Hatcher, he's the, the head of the bank, I guess the bank manager in the town, and he really wants Sam to go to prison over this thing. Yeah. And Sam lets us know why here. It's it's because he wrote him one of his prophecy letters saying, you are doing evil deeds in sight of the Lord. Yep. Yep. And, I'd want him to go to jail, too, I guess. <laughs> yeah, th- three votes. I, I, and also, like, th- this is the only moment in the entire movie in which Mike acts like a lawyer where he sort of looks in slack-jawed horror at his client <laughs> with the expression of, uh, this is a thing that might have been useful for you to tell me yesterday. And, <laughs> yeah. and Muriel gives the, the again, it, it is only the like background women characters, none of which pass the Bechdel test. Obviously, it's a Christian. Of movie, course. Yeah. Uh, 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 who says, uh, Sam, you have to tell your lawyer everything so he can represent you. And I'm like, I, d- d- yes, don't let's not just resign that in the background. Like, that's a real thing. And you're playing it off like this is just a thing that like a crazy lady says to her. Oh, God, I hate this. And, you, and, this <laughs> and movie what's so great and everything is that this movie is trying to play in that in between area of like crazy old person who thinks he can talk to God, which they're validating and crazy old person who doesn't know you can't pour sweet tea into the guest tank of your car so it's, it's gotta be this adorable switch back and forth between like oh you and sorry what did the lord of the universe say next right <laughs> yeah so he goes off to find his notes about the letter that he sent to jack hatcher uh the the bank manager um and while he's gone there's this great conversation that mike and muriel have where he's like oh he writes letters to everybody he even writes letters to the president I'm like, this was filmed in 2016. I really want to know what salutation he used (laughs) that he wrote. Uh, But yeah, so he comes back. He's like, here's the notes for for that. And he shows the guy his notes. They are serial killer crazy. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Kevin Spacey from Kevin Spacey would be like, that's creepy. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah. They're drawings of nails and baseball bats and an axe or something they were the doodles i did when i was in fucking fifth grade and uh, shit weirdly my notes say if you were a fifth grader and drew these you would be expelled from school these days I, but yep then, that, that happened all I mean, not, worked it, out <laughs> <laughs> luckily podcasting turned out to be a career yeah what dream told you that andrew you have to tell us <laughs> So he starts telling him about this dream, and this is the dumbest of the dreams that we have to listen to, right? Oh, my God. It's like Creed lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> There's a baseball bat playing beads. Yeah. No, so there, he's had a dream where there was a baseball bat and a hatchet and a tree, and they were all having a conversation, and the hatchet was trying to rip the tree off by giving him these worthless beads. And I'm thinking to myself, this is the shit that everybody's been saying is perfectly accurate. Yep. So yep. is a fucking axe and a baseball bat going to rip off a tree or are you lying to us, movie? Yeah. <laughs> and also, can I just throw this out there? What, spoiler alert. We're supposed to believe that the head of a bank got this letter. I had a dream where a hatchet was was fucking Jewish to a baseball bat. And he was like, I'm going to fucking frame this guy. for Yes. Super- <laughs> 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 Everyone's going to take this dude super seriously. I got to get on this right away. I better destroy his credibility. <laughs> And by the way, the the reason that one of the people in the dream was a hatchet is because it was Jack Hatcher. 
that is as clever as the movie's ever gonna get. Hey, was that like a Nostradamus callback, like a history? For, I don't know. But, oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. it was weird. I think it's just because there was a big cry fight about whether hat chair would play in the writers' room, and, and this is the compromise. <laughs> So, but but for whatever reason, Mike finds this prophetic dream pretty damn convincing. So, okay, so that scene wraps up. The next day, Mike's having lunch at White's Restaurant. I feel like all they had to do was paint over the only on their sign for oh, this right. business. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where we're going to reintroduce Bryce the reporter, the character that we met earlier. Now, Bryce will come in whenever the writer can't think of how to present the few things that the main character needs to know, like can't come up with a clue or whatever. So the reporter will just come and say, you know what? I just found out last night. The next thing you need to know for the plot to work. (laughs) Also, Bryce reveals something here that never gets touched on again, but it fucking terrifies me. They're talking about Sam and he's like, oh, you know, I don't want to write about Sam because uh, one time he wrote me a letter about my deepest darkest secret (laughs) and then the movie just fucking moves on yep (laughs) mike's like so a liver sandwich (laughs) (laughs) yeah so but the reporter reveals that sam occasionally sends him prophetic dream letters too and usually he just throws them away except for the one that very clearly demonstrated foreknowledge of the future and i'm like i feel like you'd keep the other ones then yeah yeah I was like, hey, can you dream me up some lottery numbers, you know? Right, yeah. Um, so, but yeah, but he's like, don't worry, I'll be back later and I'll have all of the plot information for you. So then we get uh, Sam and Mike heading to the church that he supposedly embezzled funds from to yeah. meet with their deacons. And I'm just, before we talk about this scene, I'd love to flash in our memories, in our minds, in our imaginations to the writer's room where someone said, yeah, so when we meet the people he supposedly embezzled from, I guess the only thing we shouldn't do is make them the only black characters in the movie, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, and and the only black female character is terrible to everyone, yells at everybody, and is, at least the movie implies, in on the effort to frame Sam. Mm Mm-hmm. But... Fortunately, they're never seen from again. So, oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, okay. So, a- again, I, I, I'm not, I'm no lawyer, but I feel like taking your lawyer with you to meet with the people who accused him of the crime is probably not a typical lawyer action. Uh, okay. No, look, if this movie didn't think that depositions were a kind of hat, like these are the <laughs> kinds of questions that you would ask during a deposition, right? But yeah. So, uh. so oh, and on the way, by the way, uh, he mentions to Mike that he had a dream that his church was going to catch on fire later on in the movie. <laughs> I've, this is not the only time that I laughed uh, unintentionally uh, in this movie, but but Christianity causes you to write as a straight line of dialogue in your own fucking movie. That's when I realized this was a bad fire. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He says, normally when in my dreams, fire represents God, uh, you know, building a new one uh, over the old or whatever. But this one I could tell was a bad fire. And I'm like, oh, so really your dreams can mean whatever the hell you want them to mean in retrospect. <laughs> Interesting. It's a very accurate the way that you do that. So anyway, yeah. so, <laughs> so scorpion horse face locusts. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So Mike and Sam show up at the other uh, church and... Larry, the, the, the church, the church deacon number one or whatever, doesn't <laughs> like all of this down home pleasantry bullshit that Sam's trying to pull on him. Yeah. Right? He, he's, they're like, Hey, don't be that way. And he's like, I didn't do anything, you ungrateful. Nyah! And then he's like, Hey, let's get started. Let's just start. <laughs> so our... we're gonna, now I'm going to start the recorder. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. and, and again, we made reference to it in, in the last scene that this church is 100% James Brown's church from the Blues Brothers, right? Yep. Yes. And we're supposed mm-hmm. to think this is Sam's home church, right? Like he's just there, like banjoing it up. Well, no. Yeah. Now, Andrew, when you go with your clients to visit the people who they have (laughs) accused them of crimes and they say no notes allowed, do you usually agree to that? 
<laughs> so, <laughs> sure. Let's let's go with yes. Why not? See, <laughs> see again. If we were deposing the a witnesses, there'd be a position. There'd be a court reporter here. Somebody that types eight thousand <laughs> words a minute on those little corded typewriter thingies. Yeah, they're awesome. I say, uh, yeah, they say no notes because you'll just twist our words in court. And later he's like, oh, so who did you speak with at the bank? And they give him the name. And I wanted him so bad to turn to her and go, can I can I write that down? At least? You think I would <laughs> twist that? <laughs> <laughs> also, can can we just just point out like that? <laughs> There is a sequence at the very end in which uh, the the three black deacons are upset at Sam because and they think this is the motive for him stealing the money because he has prophesied that their church was going to grow and was going to need the hundred thousand dollars for new construction or whatever. And the church hasn't grown. And that prophecy never comes true in this movie at all. Like the no. church is just like, nope, sorry, Sam, you're, that that dream was full of good old fashioned bullshit. Shit. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, no. And, and they say like he's like, so uh, can you give us a bunch of details about the way in which this church banks that will never matter to the story or come back in any way? And the, and the deacons are like, we sure can. We can spend four goddamn minutes on how many different accounts we have and why we have such a large building improvement. Fund. There, were, there were two separate checks and he forged Jennifer's signature. And yeah, no, this is all of this is see, we do know a thing about something. I mean, not. <laughs> <laughs> Not anything about the law, mind no, you, but you or know, how one would we've, embezzle. We've we've banked before, so yeah. <laughs> we know how checks work, Ugh. more or less. Um, so yeah, so they get done with whatever the hell that was. They're driving. Away. There was also like the as they leave, the uh, one uh, deacon says to him, like you know, the truth will come out, Sam, and he's like, yeah, the truth will come out, and then everybody's like. You guys want to say that three or four more times in the next two minutes? Make sure it sticks. They're like, yep, sure do. Sure do. God's on my side. No, he's on my side. Okay, God doesn't listen to black people, okay? I can knock you out for two days, okay, Rick? Relax. (laughs) So, okay. So now it's the next day. We're back at White's, the the restaurant. We're back at the White restaurant. Um, And reporter comes in, and he's like, hey, man, I have an info dump for you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm, I'm sorry. Before we get to the info dump, uh, a honky tonk version of Amazing Grace is playing in the background, and neither of you thought that was worth noting at all. Okay. Oh, I missed that. How the oh. fuck did I miss that? So, but Bryce comes in. And he's like, "Hey, man, I talked to the warden uh, on the phone the other day, and I illegally recorded the conversation. Would you like to listen to it?" And he says, "Would I?" I- <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's worse than that because because Bryce says, well, I recorded the conversation and they both have this like look by, by in between each other of like, did you break the law? And lawyer Mike is like, you know, knowing whether South Dakota, Montana, Ida, wherever the fuck we are, whether that's a one party consent state or a two party, kind of feel like that might be the lawyer's job to know yes. that. But nope, <laughs> nope, it's fine. It's Nobody fine. thought to Google it Ooh. or knew what they would Google. Yeah. <laughs> who, who, who could possibly know what laws are in this movie? <laughs> now, uh. obviously, Andrew, you never represent crazy, um, evil F- f- old guy framing corporations no matter how much we ask you to but when someone calls you and is like hey are you working for an evil guy to frame someone do you go yes <laughs> <laughs> let me hide behind this lace fan as i answer your question yeah um yeah no but but i i should point out that like Virtually nothing actually happens in the conversation, just that the warden sounds guilty-ish. Yep. Right? Like, so if he had just got done getting a blowjob from his secretary, it would be exactly the same. Right. So that's the end of that scene. Uh, and then later we get uh, Mike getting ready for church when lawyer friend comes to see him to warn him off this case. <laughs> hey, uh, just so you know, the, the bad guys are the bad guys. Yeah, right. And they're also very quick with the framing someone for crimes trigger finger. I'm not sure if that'll ever be relevant, but I should just let you know. This is not foreshadowing in any way whatsoever. (laughs) So, okay, so now we're going to really drill into that relationship between Mike and his wife. I know you guys have been dying for that. So we get the two of them summoning a mountain. This is 
It's so good. There's, he's literally justifying why the movie's called Mountaintop. He's like, I love mountaintops. That's very, they're very relevant to the movie. They were the inciting incident. So don't make fun of my title or I'll cry. What did you want to talk about? <laughs> well, I love to. He's like, you know, this is where I was the moment I decided to become a pastor. Let me tell you all about it. And I'm like, it's been six fucking years and this has never come up. <laughs> <laughs> they just silently cohabitated and made sandwiches for the next <laughs> six years. <laughs> I was going to say, well, maybe that's why her response to that story is, oh, neat story. Let me tell you about how I almost divorced you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> She's like, you know, I was going to leave you uh, last year. I had even signed the divorce papers. I'm like, does that is that how it works? You just present them with the, the signed one papers. One way design. Uh, it, yes, and and to of lock, course, to lock. I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> you know, just to fuck with me, the movie decides that not only like while it's not showing us Sam's dreams, it's also not going to show us anybody's flashbacks either. No, like, no, uh, uh, no yeah, they're just going to tell why, us about their <laughs> memories. Why show when you can tell? Yeah, yeah. She uh. has this moment where she's like, "I was going to leave you last November. I signed the divorce papers." And there's this <laughs> fucking huge pause where I'm like, <laughs> "But." But, <laughs> but. but she gets around to saying she's like, I didn't leave you because I got a pro a dream prophecy letter from Sam. C- cool. <laughs> and then he goes, he goes, well, you know what? I'm glad you didn't divorce me. And and she just stares at him in the yeah. scene. And yep. <laughs> she, she, she does not even give a ditto here. Yeah. No. <laughs> nope. I, too, have feelings. Mm-mm. She's like, well, I got that letter telling me not to. And he's like, cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> How you feeling now? You ever walk in and you're in trouble because you fucked up and you got to test the waters with your wife so you talk about something else? <laughs> You'd be like, so I say, how are the front plants? And I'd be like, oh, good. And you'd be like, Cool. <laughs> Are you like mad at those plans? Like... So the next morning, Bryce catches Mike on the way to the uh, on his way to work with a bit of important plot development. Man, does he have it? Hey, um, I just realized there's no way to connect these fucking dots. So I broke into <laughs> real. Really, hear me out when I say this. I broke into a bank employee's old laptop. He works with me now. Why did I do that? Who the fuck knows? But I did. And I have information for you that connects the dots of the plot of this movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He he apparently did some kind of ninjutsu Tom Cruise getting the knock list kind of <laughs> shit or whatever and figured out the entire plot. So it turns out that the, the state is about to open up the forest for development and Jack Hatcher, the main bad guy, is trying to gobble up all the land before anybody knows how valuable it is. Oh, and his recommendation is to, and please, please correct me if I'm wrong, corner the guy whose information he stole while he takes care of his sick wife who is dying of cancer. Yes. Yeah, he's like, well, you know, it's going to be easy for you to find him because he's always by the side of his dying wife. And he's like, well, that's very convenient for, well, for me anyway, it's not. <laughs> and, and can I just say, the best place to interview a witness. <laughs> right, yeah. So, and, and also, by the way, the, one of the things that he found when he broke into just his coworker's computer hoping there might be something juicy on there was a copy of a letter that one of the evil conspirators wrote <laughs> that said in the margins, quote, this will take care of the Miller problem once and for all, end quote. <laughs> they might as well, so he might as well have been like, well, why did they write out blah, ha, ha? Was it just dictation <laughs> here? Or, uh... <laughs> oh, this, is, this is Andrew reviewing my tweets level of self-incriminating. <laughs> 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 Yeah, and Bryce is like, well, anyway, that's the entire plot right Th- there. That's the movie. That is, I I am just reminded of the, the bit in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, like right before the, the missiles are about to impact on Magrathia, where, you know, Douglas Adams says the, because stress and tension are major problems in the galaxy, we will now tell you that no one gets hurt. And uh, like, why the <laughs> fuck do we watch the next hour of this movie right. when they've told us what happens? Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, I, the, the, the movie could legitimately end in the next scene with a bad guys getting arrested montage. Yeah. So 
I, I feel like the writers need a minute to figure out what the hell to do with the rest of the runtime. So we're going to pause for a quick break. But first, I'm going to give Act 3 the hard sell. Will the movie abandon this plot and desperately try to replace it before the credits? Will the replacement plot be essentially the exact same plot but shorter? <laughs> Will Sam's dream prophecies ever tell anyone anything that turns out to be helpful in any way during the movie? Yes, yes, and no. But stick around anyway for the unsighting conclusion of Mountaintop. Okay, okay. How about Syrup Phone? Now, that, that one only comes with the French buttons. Like on the phone? Yeah, on the phone, yeah. Hey, guys, what you talking about? Well, we're trying to figure out what phone plan to use next time we go to Canada. Yeah, all of ours majorly crapped out. My phone bricked entirely. Nah, that tracks. But why don't you guys just try Mint Mobile? What's Mint Mobile? Feels good, doesn't it? Oh, it really does. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just $15 a month. 15 bucks a month? What's the catch? There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. I used Mint Mobile the entire time we were in Canada, and my service didn't miss a beat. Okay, but do I have to switch my phone? Because at this point, I've had it longer than two of my cats. So. It, it, it's true, he has. Actually, you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan, and you get to keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. But you should get a new phone, Noah. You, you you really should. I don't want to lose my high score on Snake. That's fair. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. What's Mint Mobile? What? No! No, absolutely not. I don't know, guys. I just talked to me, and uh turns out, yes, I do get the point. Mutiny! Murder you. Fine. Well, hey there, Pastor. How goes the case? Not great, random reporter guy. There's just so much I don't know. Well, maybe I could be some help. You think? Yeah. Let's, let's say Dave Hutchins left the file cabinet in his office open last night, and I happened to find... These. Wow, blueprints. These are fantastic. But isn't Mr. Hutchins' office on the 28th floor? It sure is, but glass is surprisingly easy to scale if you've got these here gecko gloves. Uh, okay. Then all it took was a glass cutter and a choreographed capoeira dance to get through the laser grid, and dipsy doodle, there's a kitten caboodle. Uh, hey, random reporter guy? Yes, Pastor? A any chance you could find something on Brett Kavanaugh before, like, mid June? Uh, maybe, but wouldn't it just be easier to... Okay, thank you. The sketch is over. Stop censoring my art, Andrew! I'm making art! It's not art. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit, and we're going to rejoin the action on what I believe is the film's most useless scene <laughs> Ooh, a lot of competition a but yeah <laughs> yeah no but this is a scene that basically i i think it's only there so that like no one would even accuse them of passing the bechdel test <laughs> this is where muriel and peg have pie together peg is yeah. uh mike's wife well, they also had to use up the rest of the mouth noises that me and andrew donated <laughs> oh god oh you know, the only thing better than listening to people eat is listening to old people eat. <laughs> yeah. It's like a gas station commercial for hot coffee in this movie. <laughs> ah, so, yeah, so, but Muriel's come by to explain to Mike's wife that Sam says Mike is pregnant too. And then she just stares at her and she's like, yeah, I mean something completely different from what I just said. Actually. Pregnant with the potential for God's love. I, what? <laughs> just, I'm going to start doing that. Like, I'm going to open conversations with shit like, hey, you know, guys, God told me potatoes are trying to take over the government. By which I mean we're going to have to record half an hour later on Wednesday if that's possible. <laughs> uh, yeah. no, no stranger than this movie. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So then Sam and Mike... God, why does he keep bringing Sam to this shit? I, Sam and Mike go to see cancer wife ex-banker guy? Mm-hmm. I, I, I literally, my notes from this point on are just, why would anyone be where anyone is right now? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I, <laughs> Right. So so they show up. They're like, you know, we're going to interview him about what he knows about why you were framed about the 
land deals, whatever. But they get there. The husband's not there yet. So Sam has to magically lay hands upon the cancer wife. Lot of touching of an unconscious woman by a mentally ill man. (laughs) Well, and let's keep in mind that he doesn't like green mile this shit, right? He doesn't care. (laughs) She dies right after this. She does die. So so God, apparently, I don't, again, we don't get to hear it, but Sam walks in the room and God was like, hey, I am going to kill this bitch, but you know, I didn't mean to make her that uncomfortable. So I tell you what, why don't you give her two tweaks on each cheekbone so that she'll feel great on the way out? (laughs) (laughs) Sam might as well just hold a pillow over her face. (laughs) Finally, she's at peace. Papa told me to. (laughs) So, a, a mentally ill elderly person is fondling his wife at the, as the time that the husband comes back in, looks at Mike and says, hey, man, uh, why are the two of you here in my wife's hospital room? And Mike's answer is, oh, it's fine. I'm the reverend. Like, no, no, that's not fine. Like, like you still have to ask and get permission and be invited. He's not there, reverend. Right. Yeah, right. Also. That would make me more nervous. If I walked into a room and saw someone touching my wife and they were like, oh, don't worry, I'm a religious official, I'd be like, one strike against you, my guy. <laughs> right. No, it's okay. I come from the most molesty of all professions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but then he's like, well, actually, uh, Curtis is the character's name. He's like, well, actually, Curtis, we came here to ask you a few. And then Sam cuts him off. And he's like, nope, we're just leaving. We're done. We're leaving. Papa said to leave. We're going. And he's like, wait, no, if Papa says to leave, this whole scene makes no sense. We're going! This scene makes no sense! We needed 90 minutes! Or Amazon Prime would only give us $11 a download. <laughs> so, yeah. So they leave quite abruptly. Uh, and then fucking shitty Christian music cuts in and we get characters doing their thing as a montage while the movie tries to figure out what the fuck it's even about now, right? <laughs> the movie might as well say, what a great question. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we get the the wife painting and the reporter typing and Mike hugging his wife, Sam looking pensively over the Appalachians. That's a montage in this yeah. movie. And it ends with the prosecutor calling Mike and offering up a plea deal. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, all right, I'll let you describe the plea deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the plea deal is six months probation with no fine. So that's nothing, right? Like that right. is. I, this is my. I, I hate this in movie and TV so much more than it, because that is saying. I will dismiss this case, right? Like there, right. there is, there is no, it's not like Mike's going to be like, well, I don't know. I mean, I might buy some like street meth in the next couple of months and like <laughs> have this spring back. No, like, come on, right? He's 105. Like it, it is, but, at, at, and of course, like, despite offering the, the opportunity to plea bargain to nothing, right? Uh, a, uh, prosecutor has got to be a bitch about it because you know she's a lady of uh, course and b of of course we have to go through the heart-wrenching scene of mike turn of of uh, sam turning it down because you know well if i'm not guilty why should i plea bargain to any and it's like you're plea bargaining to zero right right like yeah admit to and, uh, shit i admit to being the second shooter on the grassy knoll to get zero right yeah. like, <laughs> all right, right. Yeah. So yeah. So Mike goes to Sam to talk to him about the the plea offer, but he didn't do anything wrong. Dag nab it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And the apostles wouldn't die for a lie. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a even Mike kind of looks at the screen and breaks the fourth wall here and is like, "Yeah, no, I know that was that was a little over the top. Um, we, sorry, won't, we won't do that one again. I'm sorry." It's also weird because one of the apostles very clearly does take a plea deal in the Bible. The yep. king's like, "Hey, get out, and you're fine." And he's like, oh, plea deal. Awesome. Yeah. Doop a doop a doop. Off Never I go. heard of this Jesus speller. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and then we got to Mike mountain biking some more when he just so happens to come upon <laughs> the warden, the hatcher, and all the other bad guys in the middle of a, a conspiring. Yeah. The bank ledger that they forged might as well be at this meeting, <laughs> like smoking a suit. <laughs> hey, how's it going? What's going on? We just came out to the middle of the woods to conspire. Oh, damn it, a mountain biker. 
<laughs> and and Mike though is so fucking dumb that he just rolls right up on him and he's like, "Oh, is this a bad guy conspiracy <laughs> meeting?" Or you guys little abdering this shit over here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I love it because the warden takes him aside and he's like, ha, 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 sorry, let me talk to him for a second. Hey, man, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and to be clear, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> well, right, because th- he's like, hey, are these guys uh, real estate developers? And he's like, ha, real estate. To- why, why do you why do you ask? And he's like, well, you know, I just I really love this trail. I'd, I'd hate to see it developed. And I'm like, is the plot Mike trying to save his favorite bike trail now? Sure. is that the story <laughs> and and the warden's like well i'll tell you what why don't you not pursue this at all and and mike's like that is the it's the closest thing we have to a plot i kind of have to i don't <laughs> there's nothing else there's no backup plan here i am not not gonna pursue it nor am i gonna fasten this bike helmet on my head that i have just put on <laughs> right <laughs> I- so okay so now he's he's back home uh watching his wife paint and he gets a phone call that cancer wife from earlier died there is no reason for us to that like we there nothing is gained from adding her death to the film no or the in or the interview that comes right after it there's no right. point to any of this they just want to make papa seem less powerful <laughs> i guess yeah so he's like oh well now that his it, it, dead wife is out of the way i guess i can go ask curtis some questions about the the case right so he goes to the newspaper to chat with that guy, and first, of course, the cha- the guy has to say, hey, you know, I just want you to know that your prayers really helped, and so did that <sighs> old guy's. My wife was so stoked about dying. What? She so was in such a good What mood. could that possibly mean, right? <laughs> like, she died within six hours of meeting these yes. folks, right? Like, is he saying, well, yeah, no, I did. she would have died three hours in if you hadn't shown up. <laughs> like, oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, well, you know, I have to ask you about whether or not you helped to frame my client. And he's like, well, I don't know about all that. He's like, well, I should point out that Sam has a magical relationship with the God of the universe, Jehovah himself. And he's like, oh, well, in that case. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, I also have a subpoena. <laughs> I I will pay the writers of this movie right now. The actors in this scene, anyone associated with this film in any way whatsoever, one million American dollars if they could define subpoena. Right? No, they cannot. <laughs> I, I, your d- money is safe. <laughs> he printed it up on his printer at home. <laughs> <laughs> that Wait. printer. Oh He's my a- god. <laughs> Oh, I wanted it to be a dot matrix subpoena, right? Where he's got to peel off the side thing. <laughs> yeah, might as well. You bracelet. hear that like whirring noise of the daisy wheel. Like, uh, yes. yeah. oh. <laughs> it's fantastic. Printed this up on my Coleco Adam. So then, then we get Mike <laughs> delivering a sermon about, correct me if I'm wrong, about how magical prophecy dreams would be a perfectly legitimate vehicle for Christian storytelling. <laughs> Hey, everybody, you can talk to God if you try hard enough. And I wrote in my notes, man, that's a homicidally dangerous lie. Yeah, no (laughs) shit. Yeah, I I heard none of the sermon because I just have musical note ominous banjo, right? It's like like Journey of the Sorcerer, but only two notes. It's really weird. (laughs) (sighs) But then, okay, so Mike goes to see the prosecutor to tell her that that Sam won't take the plea deal. (laughs) And it turns out that the indictment has been dismissed. Sure. Yeah. And 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 these two characters do not look at each other and say, all right, so what, what the fuck are we doing in this movie anymore? Right. right? Like, what is the movie <laughs> even about? Also, she says that the bank doesn't want to press charges. <laughs> it's the church that he embezzled money from. That, right. Yes. <laughs> and also, pressing charges means being a cooperating witness. They have the ledger, right? Like, it's, uh, that, yeah. that, that wouldn't matter <laughs> in any way whatsoever. 100%. Here's what happened. The writers of this movie, like, looked at each other and said, can you write a trial scene? Can you write a trial scene? <laughs> then simultaneously shit their pants, right? And, uh, yeah. And so this is what we got this instead. Yeah. Charges is what they yeah. would probably do at this yeah, point. Right? That happens all the time. Mike <laughs> might as well reach below the line of the screen and try to pull the credits up. Right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, you heard me. The movie's over. <laughs> <laughs> so- 
So he goes uh, home to tell his wife the good news. We have him and uh, him and his wife and Sam and Sam's wife all having dinner together. <laughs> Sam has a spiritual tummy ache. Okay, tiny note. As this started, they're peas and carrotsing, and the line that gets caught in actual audible dialogue is, I've eaten so much chocolate syrup! <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it goes weirdly loud for a minute and there is not dessert on the table no, like no. I, so a glass full of hershey's syrup who the fuck knows yeah yeah no it goes great with your spaghetti yeah so yeah but sam's like oh my god my stomach hurts and mike's wife is like oh you should take him to the hospital he goes nope nope this is a spiritual tummy ache <laughs> muriel says he doesn't like the doctor I- <laughs> I it really felt like Muriel was a real person for a second there, like trying to break out of this movie, going, please help us. Like he is mentally ill, and he's just like he says whatever <laughs> the fuck it takes to not go to the doctor, but like take him to the fucking doctor, please. Nope, come on. Yeah, what no. does he need to do before we take him to a doctor? Yeah, I, an old person tells you it feels like an anaconda is constricting my insides, but in a magic way. No, right. like yeah, you call nine one one. Yes, but instead, if Mike gets a call just then, and it turns out that his church is on fire, so he's got to he's got to go to it. Yep. What is he? He's gonna blow real hard. <laughs> why does he have to, anyway so he goes to the church sam goes with him the suspenseful music in the background is pretty sure something interesting is going on right here <laughs> oh we get another shot of this cgi fire and it is not great it hasn't gotten better with age that's for sure yeah there's might as well just be like word art from word 97 in the corner being like <laughs> fire in all red letters <laughs> so so okay so now it's the the, the church burns down the next day we get the feds coming to talk to Mike, right? The, they think that Sam burned down Mike's church. Yeah. As we will learn, um, all policing in this universe is done by just someone randomly goes, I think it was Sam again. And they're like, yep, let's go fucking get him. <laughs> That's all it takes. Well, no, they have evidence, Eli. Don't act like they don't have evidence here. They have a can of a gas can that was abandoned at the scene that said Sam's lawn service right on the outside of it. Yeah. And when he's like, oh, don't worry, he was with me and two other people. They're like, hmm, maybe the four of you burned the church. <laughs> Right, because to be clear, in order for the rest of this movie to happen, the feds have to be convinced that an old guy, a pastor, an old lady, and his pregnant wife burned down his own church. Yes. Uh huh. And keep in mind, like he doesn't like own this church. It's not like he would get an insurance <laughs> settlement out of it. <laughs> right. He just works for the church. It, it is. It is one hour and ten minutes into this movie, and they have just restarted the plot. Yes, that, yep. like they were like, "Hey, um, why don't we frame Sam for a crime he didn't?" Oh God, that sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> well, they tugged on those credits, and they just didn't come. That's the problem. <laughs> But yeah, Mike doesn't care about their bullshit investigation into this bullshit arson. Uh, so he tries to call Sam, but damn it if Sam hasn't already been rearrested and suddenly the fucking plot is back on in business, guys. So Mike goes to the jail to see Sam again. And while he's there, the cops show up to arrest him for also the same crime mike we are so glad you're here you're under arrest this is this is great this is going to be a coincidence <laughs> <laughs> saved us a drive gas prices these days i gotta tell you this is we should arrest convenient. lawyers as co-conspirators more often they're they're all in the same place with their clients it's so <laughs> yeah. it's so handy <laughs> And when they came in and arrested him, I wrote in my notes, and also for murder of yourself in the first degree. <laughs> well, Mike's like, well, wait, what are you arresting me for? And he's like, well, the person who called in the fire anonymously on 911 from a payphone and didn't leave their name said they saw you and Sam leaving. And he's like, so are you going to somehow use that in a court of law or something? The anonymous... 
Nine one one. No, then what the fuck are we doing here? No, we just we just do whatever the phone tells us to. That's why we <laughs> we have a an honor based arrest system. Right? Here. Yes, you've been <laughs> accused of a crime. We have to arrest you. That's the way the rules work in this universe. I, but there there is the only realistic scene in this movie in which uh, Sam proceeds to describe to Mike, you know. All of the crazy shit he's been volunteering to the cops. And you can see Mike like kind of slap his forehead and be like, Sam, we, we, we've been over this. You are represented by counsel. Please don't talk to the fucking cops. OK, like <laughs> what you want to say is I decline to answer these questions and assert my Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. And I'm not going to speak to you until my goddamn lawyer gets here. Yeah, <laughs> there's just a moment trying to get out. Sorry, <laughs> but no. But of course, then they then they they follow up that semi accurate scene with the scene where they arrest him and put him in the same cell as his supposed accomplice. God, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun that they let them be roommates. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And Mike is like, "Wow, this is a, a really crappy turn of events." And Sam says, "Don't worry, God has a plan." And I'm like, at this point, I don't even think the fucking screenplay has a plan, man. I'm not <laughs> buying not. it. <laughs> don't you worry, brother. God's got 26 more minutes of movie in store for you and me. I promise. <laughs> so okay, so sometime later, they're they're having prison dinner. Uh, Sam is saying grace when suddenly Tori Martin, redheaded R and Raw from earlier, shows up and he's like, "Hey guys, you, you probably forgot I was in the movie, but um, do you think you could minister to us criminals while you're here?" And he's like, "You know, I guess I sure can." <laughs> are you sure none of these floors are wet and you don't want me to slip and fall, Tori? Oh, it's fine. No, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but and 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 okay, I get that this is a bit of a kindness to us. Uh, they doodly do over the prayer, right? Like, so I get that this lawyer preacher movie can't do any lawyer stuff, but like, could they not do any <laughs> prayer stuff? Like, I, I can write you a fucking prayer right here. Come on. Ugh. Yeah. But yeah, and then, and then we, we doodly do over that and we immediately cut to Mike and Sam sitting around in their cell afterwards going like, wow, that was pretty darn Christian, the thing we did. That was, mm-hmm. that was great. I bet if people had seen that prayer, they sure would have. <laughs> would have probably uh. convinced some atheists to turn their life over to Christ. Yeah. So, okay. So the next day, Sam wakes up. He's had a prophetic dream, so he has to write that down. Yep. He starts telling Mike about it, and Mike's just like, dude, you're not fucking me afterwards. I don't want to hear about another one of your stupid goddamn dreams. Come on. We're in the same prison cell. I'm telling you your <laughs> dreams. And, and of course, the movie is going to have an old person. At ready, and so I had tied an onion to my belt, which was the style at the time. Like, I just, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, great. Come on, Grandpa. But then... Mike has a prophetic dream as well, right? We get him waking up and he's like, hey, I think I just had one of them God prophecy dreams as well. <laughs> and it has an eagle in it. And this is this is uh, uh, the second unintentionally hilarious moment because Mike says, yeah, I had an eagle in it. And uh, and Sam says, ooh, that is uh, some next level prophecy when yes. it has an eagle in it. And And Mike says, yeah, what does that mean? And he's like, beats the fuck out of me. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, it's just a... <laughs> it was great. Oh, God. I love it Do you want this so black much. belt? You can have a black belt in prophesying right yeah, now. Okay. I don't know. What he's, he's, all you have to do is do an eagle, and you did one, so... The number one ranked prophesier now. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, and then we get uh, another scene of him sermonizing to inmates, and all we hear is like, but if you become Christian, your life sure will be better. Amen. Right? He says, it's not too late to turn your life around, and I wanted one guy to be like, I'm actually here for the rest of my life. So it's, it's, actually, <laughs> it's, probably too late. it's literally too late for me. Well, okay, everyone else, except for <laughs> Alan. <laughs> so, yeah, so but the, but the cops come in. Uh, to tell Mike that his bail's been posted, but but Sam's hasn't, right? So he leaves, and there's this great moment where Sam just turns to everybody, because like, they, they, apparently they're expecting him to now sermonize, and he's like, yeah, everything he said, the, everything that guy said. I, uh, I, I, just, I just do future dreams. <laughs> <laughs> um, and honestly, I, I don't want to be a ball buster, but you guys' future is all pretty similar, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> So so Mike gets out of jail and he learns that it was lawyer friend who helped him out. Now I don't know if we mentioned this before but lawyer friend was one of the deacons at his church. Yeah. Sure, why not? 
yeah. So he tells him at this point, oh, also you're fired from your pastor job too now. You know, because you burned down the building where you do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and Mike, surprisingly, like, you know, takes this rather well. He's like, yeah, you know, I did, I, I do it part time. You have good reason to think I burned the building down. I get this is an easy firing. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. I was in jail when you decided to fire me. That's usually, you know, how that works. So, so he goes home. And then that night, Bryce, the reporter, comes to see Mike and his wife with a whole new plot. I, right. So let me just. You know, because our our, our listeners are are, are probably uh, as confused as we are. Mike isn't anyone's lawyer anymore. Nope. Right. Nope. Uh, Sam is in jail for burning down the church for which Mike does not represent. I was not a part of the dream. It's not a part of the uh, engagement letter. Like the case that Mike was hired to do for Sam was dismissed. And by the way, uh, Sam, uh, Mike can't represent Sam in this because they're fucking co-conspirators. Right. <laughs> and they're charged as co-conspirators. So, yeah, um, this is just uh, the reporter's got nowhere to go, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I've got all this plot. I got unloaded on somebody. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hey, how's it going? The script writers are crying again. Uh, go check out a gas station. <laughs> Uh, go check a gas station. Yeah, he says the 9-11 call was a setup. He never tells us how he knows that, uh, but he does know that it came in from a payphone near the church. And he's like, you know what? I know exactly where there's a payphone near the church. There was an eagle sitting on it in my dream. Yeah. So he goes to the store from his dream, and, it's, and he sees there is a payphone there. He picks it up to make sure it's really a phone. Yeah, and not candy. Always important. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what's awesome? Like when you're being framed for something and then you go touch the key piece of evidence. That so, important. <laughs> so, so important. So important. To your acquittal. Yeah. Smear oh. your face all over yeah. it. Yeah. And look. This scene is just a vehicle for him to see the fucking surveillance footage to see the actual bad guy. But I would like to credit a hero here, which is the teenage worker at the gas station who completely <laughs> diffuses all the tension out of this scene because he's like, hey, does that camera work? And she's like, I don't fucking know. I'm playing Candy Crush. <laughs> and he's like, do you know if those tapes are still good? I don't fucking know. I'm playing Candy Crush. <laughs> <laughs> I also love, too, that they've got a security camera pointed directly at the payphone that can see nothing but the payphone. Yeah. What the hell do they think is happening on that phone? <laughs> they don't want anyone to steal their antique payphone. I get it. All right. All right. So, yeah. So so Mike talks to the boss. The boss decides that he will check the security for, footage for him. And they're both watching it, and they're like, holy shit, that's Van Turner. And every one of us is like doing a control F in our notes. Right. Like, do have we met a Van Turner? Like, literally the only reason I knew who that was is because I was trying to look up Tori Martin's name and I had to really go, I had to comb through the IMDb page to find it. The fucking audacity of this movie to be like, oh, the audience is going to definitely remember the mention of that guy whose face we didn't see in the trial scene yes. from 67 minutes ago. <laughs> there are Shakespearean scholars who wouldn't have caught that in the first folio. <laughs> and they have this weird moment where Mike's like, "Hey, can you record this this footage?" And the and the guy's like, "This is a recording, man." I yes, just... <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> this is not happening now, live. <laughs> Go quick, stop him! He's about to report me for stealing the fire or whatever. <laughs> It's also interesting how often Van Turner mugs for the camera during his illegal activities. <laughs> Holds up the credit card he got paid by the bad guys with. Yeah, right, right. Uh -huh. So, okay, so Mike goes to see Van Turner himself. Why would he not? Right? What other possible thing could he do with this information? Andrew, how often do you investigate cases? For <laughs> it, it, I, as I have in my notes, this is a law movie. You had me on because I'm a lawyer. I, <laughs> what? What? Yeah, he goes He goes to Van Turner's house and just like, you know, walks in. Let's like himself you do. in. Mm -hmm. To the dangerous criminal's house. So Van comes around the corner with a gun. And we're like, yeah, well, I mean... It would you would be in your you'd be sure, completely justified yeah. to sh to shoot him dead right now, wouldn't you? But but his gun isn't loaded, right? Yeah. He he pulls the trigger and it's empty, and then he goes, I, you know, I'm a criminal. I'm not allowed to have a gun. 
You have a gun. Yes, yes that is a you, gun. You don't have bullets, but like you have a gun. I, I really wanted to flash cut to Van at trial. Wait a second. With or without bullets? This is fucking crazy. <laughs> Do you hear yourself right now? That's just a heavy object without bullets. Why would I not? That's a paperweight. Yeah, so, but Mike explains that, you know, if he admits uh to to try to set him up for the for the arson then the cops will go easy on him but otherwise he'll end up taking the fall for all of it yeah he says i want a plea deal why why would he of all people be able to offer that he's a reverend or he's a <laughs> fuck he's an unemployed reverend no he's the defendant it's worse yeah, than right. both of those <laughs> I'm I'm real sure that I could get immunity from the prosecutor who fucking loves me. And by yes. the way, thinks I committed arson. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, when we end up in court, and let's be honest yeah. right now with each other, eventually we will. I am going to turn to the other table and whisper like, I could get you guys a really good deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so- way, way ahead of you, Eli. <laughs> So, okay, so now we're, we cut to the warden's office, to, to Mr. Forrester's office, uh, and he gets a call from Jack Hatcher, and he's like, oh, I can't represent you anymore. And he's like, really, why not? He's like, the movie is pretty much over now, uh, apparently. <laughs> it kind of resolved, I don't know, mostly off screen, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is this is like the all the bad guys get whacked at the end of casino montage, except, you know, in a Christian movie. So it's like right. we just quickly flip through everybody who's been a bad guy and they're going off to jail and we should all be happy. Yeah, right. We also get this is great. We get Sam. He's like praying. He's like, Papa, if you could let me out of jail, that sure would be swell. And then just then the cop comes in and says, hey, you're out of jail. And he looks up at God and he says, no, you nailed it. And I'm like, is that the first time it occurred to you to pray to? Not being, he's been there for several days now. So. His his cell, his new cellmate's like, don't listen to him. He's been doing that for like forty five minutes. He's done that every <laughs> ten minutes. It's he a shitty the magic trick. He goes, who says prayer doesn't work? And I'm like, anybody who tested it, and me, I, I do. I just, yep. And, and then he he gets out. Mike is there, and he's like, you're a very good lawyer, Mike. And I'm like. He didn't do, like, he filed a motion that the judge would agree to if it was in crayon, Mm -hmm. and then he gave a guy a dot matrix subpoena. That's, like, all the lawyering he's done in this entire fucking movie. A a, a subpoena in a case where the prosecution dropped the charges. Right, Right, before he showed up. Yeah, let's be clear on that. That that subpoena was nothing. Yeah. So, all right, so the, we're going to get some some wrap up here. We start with uh, Sam and Mike chatting. He's like, so, uh, you know, wh- what does the future hold for you? And he's like, are, are, you, are you trying to set up a sequel here, man? <laughs> Probably the credits. Yeah, I don't right. know, man. <laughs> I, I love that they're trying to wrap up like like a live show and we're about to fucking owe the space an extra thousand dollars. She walks in pregnant. <laughs> Literally, the wife walks in pregnant. We see good lawyer guy. She's like, you work here. I'm having the baby. His name is Isaac. Also, yes. we have our own fruit jam company. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yep. She's like, I'm all the way pregnant. And he's like, are you really? He's like, the baby's coming now. He's like, really? Right now? She's like, yep, right now. So they head to the hospital. They they have the baby. They name it Sam. Sam Isaac. Right, yeah, so apparently he was wrong about the baby's name in his prophecy. Yeah. Also, can I just throw out there, if you have someone in your life who receives direct prophecy from God, maybe don't name any kids around that person Isaac. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> not a great track record. Yeah, no, I, no, no you mention it. Uh, so, yeah, and, and we get that Mike and and Sam are now like a, Batman and Robin prison preaching team. Mm-hmm. Apparently. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. But also there's a like montage in his law office. And the only reason I remember that is because it the camera pans over a framed newspaper headline that says 
Andrews, and that's Mike's last name here. He's Mike Andrews. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Andrews puts Forrest behind bars. And no, he didn't. Unless they montaged over him getting hired as a prosecutor right, and yes. separately <laughs> charging Forrest with a different crime. Like, does anybody in this law movie have the slightest <laughs> idea of what a lawyer fucking does? No. <laughs> There's also this weird, inexplicable ass moment. So they, they, the movie ends with like them looking at uh, Mike's new baby. Sam is at the little window looking at the new baby and everything. And he goes, you know, I had a dream about your baby. I'll show you what I wrote in my notebook later. Credits. Credits. <laughs> it's uh, childhood lymphoma. I don't know what that means. Hey, well, <laughs> let's get some lunch. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. So. As heavy handed as this movie has been, I still don't know that the moral is clear. So it w- it w- what was the moral of the story? I think it was when Noah asks you if you'd like to guest on God awful movies, just say no. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I was I was hoping that you would have something else. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I honestly, that's better than the when your grandpa starts rambling about the voices in your head. Roll with it that I got from it. So sure, <laughs> form a crime fighting duo with him. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that does it for our review of Mountaintop. It's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to run back around this track again next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, no, we've got a real treat for next week. Little did I know. That Donald James Parker's <gasps> classic, Gramps Goes to College, has a sequel. Oh, shit. So we will be watching In Gramps' Shoes. Oh, fuck. Yeah, we will. <laughs> All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 352 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Andrew Torres for helping us out this week. And a quick reminder to check the show notes for links to his podcasts. And a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review, telling a friend about the show, and sharing it on your, all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Alias, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson handles our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and Convival Drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm the Lucius. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Divorce lady from, you know, scene five got Mike disbarred for not disclosing the fact that her husband was hiding marital assets. And why am I the only person who remembers he's a terrible, terrible person? <laughs> or acknowledges it at all. Tori Martin became the first Christian movie actor ever to have been too good for a role. <laughs> Tori Martin had lots of funny bits that they didn't let him do for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. We want students to know that if they go to Kent State, they have the world a la carte as an opportunity for them to develop a true global perspective.